Well, I can easily start this video by saying if you don't like water cooling because you're afraid of some potential leakage, even though that rarely happens or it doesn't happen at all, there is a solution for you to go air cooling with almost or equal the same performance. This is Deepcool's Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber Vision, which comes in a regular body of Assassin 4, where you have this digital screen on front, which I do have to say, much better visuals than their past digital screens. And uh, then we have the Vapor Chamber. Now, this is something completely new, what we haven't seen on air coolers in general, and I think this is something that will change the game for air cooling, without a doubt. So just to go quickly through the vapor chamber uh, definition. So we're having um, essentially large flattened heat pipes with high thermal conductance. In Specifically in this one, the heat is extracted through the cold plate, which starts the cooling process in the planner chamber. Now the heat gets equalized and set up through the heat pipes to get cooled further through the fin stacks. Now this kind of gives us an option, a uh, possibility to basically have a air cooler that goes up to 300 watts TDP. Now, as I stated with the digital touch, as they call it, but uh, this is um, the digital screen, we have also an application that goes in the background in your PC and actually works quite nicely, I do have to admit. Now, what's it all about? So when you access the regular screen, what you get is CPU load and temperature, then you get the CPU name, of course, we have the frequency, again, the thermals, and we have the CPU power. Of course, you have some uh, infographs about the GPU, memory, storage, and network. Now, if we go further, what you can also get is the visuals of the digital screen. Now, here we have leading zero display, which means that if you're not using Fahrenheit and if you're going with Celsius, you can just delete that zero in front and it looks much cleaner. Then you have the option to turn off the display and temperature alert with uh, this enabled. The temperature alert will flash if it gets too hot. Beneath it, you have CPU thermal, CPU usage, CPU frequency and CPU power consumption again. But the main screen where it shows a bit more than just CPU is the main screen and that's it. Quite quite cool. I do have to say I'm really digging the whole visual aspect of it. Now the visual temperature alerts and what you get is under 80 degrees the indicator will stay green. Between 80 and 90 it will go to the bright orange and then when it goes above 90 degrees it will go red. There are two options on the Assassin 4 uh, VC Vision. We have a simple switch on top of it, which, which can change from a quiet cooler to a low noise cooler, which basically when you turn down all the fans inside the chassis, it's just a subtle hum when it's under full load and when it's rocking the speeds on those fans. It's just unbelievable. Also cool thing about the Assassin 4 Wiper Chamber Vision is it contains the same slick design of the original Assassin 4. The only thing that it adds a couple of millimeters with the digital screen. Now what they did is you have a unobstructed clearance for high profile RGB RAMs. So for LGA 1851, 1700, 1200 and all that in the past, it's unobstructed. Then the LGA 20XX, you have 63 millimeters of clearance. And for AM, AM4 and AM5, it's unobstructed. We have six years of limited warranty. We have 140 millimeter performance quiet fans, which means that one goes from 500 to 1800 RPMs and the other one goes from 500 to 1450 RPMs. You have two fans. One is 140, one is 120. The performance and quiet option on the switch give you an option to basically go from 500 to 1800 RPMs. This is the performance mode and in quiet mode, 500 to 1450 RPMs. Then we have the airflow going from 61.25 CFM to 48.55 CFM and decibels at the quiet goes uh, equal or lower than 20.5 and in performance mode up to 23.7 decibels. That's honestly outstanding. Now the whole dimensions of the Assassin 4 uh, Vapor Chamber Vision is 100, 147, 144, 172. The, the total weight is 1.78 uh, kilos. We have seven heat pipes with six millimeter diameter and uh, basically both fans are 25 millimeter of thickness. 
when we're talking about connectivity, you have two four pin PWM headers going out through the fans directly to the Y splitter, which you can also adjust. And you have one USB 2.0 that needs to be connected because of the digital screen and you need to connect it to your motherboard directly and that's all there is to it. Basically benchmarking this one, I did something completely different that I never did. I tested it out on MD Ryzen 9 7900X3D, MD Ryzen 9 9950X3D and Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. So we're going to have loads of comparison. We're having comparisons with the air coolers, with the AIOs, comparisons with the cases in general and similar stuff like that so you'll have quite loads of information and i think it's time to go and check that out so going immediately with basically the strongest amd ryzen 9 9950x3d uh, but i don't have here too much comparison when you take into consideration that for instance arctic liquid freezer 3360 was cooling it down compared to the assassin 4 and galahad 2 light 360 you can see that the CPU temperature is right somewhere in the middle. So we have Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 at 85 degrees, Assassin 4 uh, Vision at 81, and then Galahad 2 Light 360 at 78. That's outstanding, to be honest. And even the clock speeds are in the middle, so that's really good. And then we go with Cinebench R23, what you get here with the 9950X3D. Arctic Liquid Freezer 3360, we have 77.7 .7 degrees, uh, clock speed is 4897 and the score is 40764. Galahad 2 Lite 77.7 .7 with 4938 megahertz and the score is 40473. While the Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber Vision 80.4 degrees, 4873 clock speed with 40,437. I think that's quite good. When you take into consideration that it was pairing up with a Liquid Freezer 3, which has a much thicker radiator than your regular 360, and then again, it's an AAO compared to an air cooler, that's outstanding. Now, let's go with Intel Core Ultra 9285K. So in Ida64 Extreme Edition System Stability Test, CPU temperature is 81 degrees. Now, this is interesting because Everything beneath it is Gamax Iceberg, HydroShift LCD, Galahad 2 LCD, Trix Panorama, and Valkyr V360. It is on the last position, but, but when you take a look at it, it's not that bad at all. I mean, one degree is compared to HydroShift LCD, that's insane. Then we go with the clock speed. It actually goes at last, but to be honest, there's no difference uh, too much in clock speed when we're talking about Intel Core Ultra. It's either 5400 or 5300 megahertz, and that's it. Cinebench R23, we have average of 10 runs, and the clock speed was at 5310 compared to, for instance, HydroShift LCD, where it was 5300. Then we go with uh, CPU temperature. Here it was 78.6, average of 10 runs, while the Galahad 2 LCD, for instance, was 76.4, and HydroShift was 80.4. So I think that's really good. And then finally we go with the uh, Cinebench score. The first place goes to Valkyrie V360 where it had 41,448. While the Deep Cool Assassin beats everything else beneath it with 41,147. That's literally just brilliant. Something that I have the most benchmarks off and I'm gonna go with air cooling for the first one we have AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D and IDA64 Extreme Edition System Stability Test CPU temperature goes the lowest 86 degrees compared to everybody else that was 92 or 93 Clock speed was also outstanding with 4725 Okay, Noctua and D15G2 had 4925 That's only reasonable and yeah, quite alright I mean still okay it should have been up there but i think comparing it to other tests you'll see what why i'm so satisfied so the cpu temperature in uh, cinebench r23 for md ryzen 9 7900x3d we have deep cool assassin 4 vapor chamber vision 78.7 next in line is be quite dark rock 3lx at 85.8 uh, .8, and then you see the rest where it is going uh, average of 10 runs with clock speed, we're having 4,948, the first place goes to Noctua again with uh, 5,040, and then finally Cinebench scores, 
Uh, Deep Cool takes the win with this one with 26,496, while the second place goes to NH D15 G2 with 26,416. Outstanding. But I had to compare it with AALs because it performed so good, I had to do it. So in uh, system stability test, CPU temperature went up to 86. As you know, it goes right between Lickmax Flow 420 and XPG Levante X360. Of course, HydroShift LCD 360 TL goes up to 80 degrees. So that's six degrees lower, but we're comparing 360 with an air cooler. Clock speed goes at uh, 47.25, as you already know, and the first place goes to Fantex Glacier 1 uh, 420D30 at 49.25. Cinebench R23, average of 10 rounds for the C CPU temperature, we have 78.7 compared to the first place where we have Galahad 2 LCD 360 SL Infinity with 75.7 degrees. Lickmax Flow 420 at 77.7 and Hydroshift LCD 360 TL at 79.1. Then we go with the clock speed, you already know that, uh, 49.48, it is at the last position, I can't uh, deny that, but uh, we're comparing an air cooler, okay, vapor chamber uh, air cooler, but with uh, uh, AIOs that are some 360, some 240, and some 420. And finally, the Cinebench score for the 7900X3D, Deepcool Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber Vision gets 26,000. 496 above it you have the antec vortex 360 addressable rgb at 26504 and beneath it xpg levante x360 with 26466 the first place goes to Enermax Lickmax Flow 420 with 27071 and of course you have loads of 420s at the top but seeing an air cooler so high with other aios Specifically because of its design, because of the vapor chamber and because of the heat dissipation and everything else, it's outstanding. The best thing, if you remember my thermal paste comparison, Deepcool DM9 really does perform outstandingly good, as I stated in that video. It's not in top 3, of course, but it was at that period of time in top 6. It was actually on 6th position, depending on, I think at that point I didn't test out Polar Term and uh, the new Thermal Grizzly Duranaut. But regardless, so you have an insane air cooler, you have a great thermal paste, you have this digital screen that is definitely nicely refreshed and you can just simply remove it, place it back, you have easy access on the middle fan and that's brilliant. I couldn't find any option to change the color here of the Deep Cool logo, but this is their colors. So in general, it's always going to be this light green. You don't have an option to switch it off. So it lights up as it is, unfortunately. But uh, honestly, for you guys that are running air cooling, you're either going with performance. So you're not going into the visual aspect. So you won't even bother with that. You will most likely even remove the digital screen and go for pure performance. If you're going with something more in the aesthetic reason, I think you can disregard this small logo of Deep Cool just for that part. But the performance, everything here that I mentioned, digital screen and all together, when you take into consideration other high premium air coolers, even AIOs, and take the price tag into consideration, you get a digital screen, you get vapor chamber extreme performance, you get clearance for the RAMs, nothing is obstructed, nice, slick, elegant, minimalistic design, basically, not elegant, but minimalistic design. I think that's really good when you take everything into consideration, right? So what I would say is uh, PC Crazy Performance Badge, without a doubt, for the Deep Cool Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber Vision, and yeah, the links are in the description. Oh, I forgot one more thing. This is CG584F. It comes with four fans pre-installed, three reverse on the side, one here at the rear. I swapped them out with these ones. These are FL120 and the placed three on top, even though for air cooling, it will be much better. And I think I will get even better performance if I had only one here above the air cooler. So yeah, regardless of that, this is a great air cooler. Without a doubt, pairs up with 360, 
some even 420 and big thumbs up to deep cool for this the links are in the description as already mentioned and uh, leave a comment would you go with uh, this type of air cooler in terms of digital screen and everything all together with this price tag would this fit your budget and will this fit your build because it is a bit higher than your regular deep cool assassin 4 so yeah leave a comment and of course don't forget to subscribe hit the like button click the notification bell and i'll see you quite shortly in a new one bye bye